Okay, so I'm here today to interview more Asulin from uh, demo to a close. And we're going to be talking about Moore's background and how he was one of the first employees in some uh, SaaS and tech startup companies and how that's led him now to run his business as a sales coach uh, for founder-led sales businesses and uh, SaaS companies that have AEs uh, to, to run sales operations. So uh, thank you for joining me more. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself, your background and uh, what you're working on now? Yeah, for sure. So um, my background is in tech SaaS startups, B2B SaaS startups. Um, I would always go into an early stage company where there are either no employees, just the founders, go in as the first employee, um, turn VP of sales within a matter of months, um, and then have to scale that company and hire and train. So I've been a VP of sales um, three times in a row, um, took a company from a little less than 1 million ARR all the way to 10 million ARR. Some, some of them got acquired and, and for a lot of money. Um, and recently around October, November time is when I sort of like got out of the VP of sales role and decided to go on my own and start, um, FDTC, which is from demo to close where I train AEs and B2B SaaS companies, how to close more demos. A lot of times it's some of the companies I, I work with are founder led sales. Um, so there's a coaching aspect and then there's sort of a training aspect you need. Some companies would need to start off with training first and then coaching to reinforce it. So it depends. Great. Um, okay. I love the way you've transitioned. Obviously, you've got loads of experience in SaaS sales, uh, mm -hmm. uh, building sales systems, teams, uh, uh, you, you know, building up the businesses. So how did you take your knowledge? How did you distill that into your coaching that you're doing now? So you're obviously focusing now on um, how to deliver great uh, sales demos that close, right? How did you distill your knowledge into this this coaching uh, program that you have yeah well so one of the things i'm, I'm very adamant about um is when i was the vp of sales i would document everything um and then i would uh, you know edit and tweak it based on new learnings but i would document everything so i had i had the playbook that i built out for the company and then i had my internal playbook that for me so if i were to go into another company as vp of sales i have my internal playbook to go off of um so i already had so as like I would do demos myself or train the AEs to do the demos. And I was like, oh, that's a really good way of pitching a feature. That's a really good discovery question. I started documenting this. Um, and then when I launched FTTC originally, it just launched as this training course. And so I just brain dumped everything alongside whatever I had on the document. Um, so that was like version one. And then what I realized was in order to train people to do a sales call or discovery, whatever it is, you need to have frameworks for them to go off of. It's just, it's easier to remember the framework versus remembering the in the weeds details. So I started taking all the information that I brain dumped on this document and building out frameworks for it. So for example, um, if you are uh, talking about a feature and you want to talk about the impact of a feature, there's a certain framework that I use that I got, I tell, I teach AEs and founders how to go about it versus just talking about the benefits of the feature. Great. Okay. Brilliant. Um, and so can you talk us through what are the typical uh, tips and lessons that you have for any SaaS founder out there that uh, is selling through demos right now and how they can improve their demo close rate? Yeah. So most, most SaaS founders that are doing founder-led sales, um, it's their company, it's their baby. So um, what, I have, what I've noticed is they end up talking about all the bells and whistles and all about all the cool features that they think are super impactful. But the truth is the prospect doesn't really care. The prospect, um, you know, either reserve 35 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour of their calendar to find out, hey, I have a problem. Show me how you can solve my problem. The problem is founder comes in and says, let me show you how I can solve your problem. And let me show you all the, a bunch of other stuff. The prospect doesn't care. So the most important part of the sales process is the discovery. That's where you're, you're collecting intel. Where I find founders make a mistake is they'll ask the prospect something like, even AEs do this, um, what's the reason you scheduled the demo? Prospect says, oh, we're looking to um, increase efficiency internally for our team. Oh, well, you've come to the right place. Our company does this. And th they start feature dumping. So the discovery is the most important part. That's where you should really, the only words that should be coming out of your mouth are essentially questions because you're collecting intel. Um, one of the most important questions that every pros every person should be asking on a demo is, 
what's the reason you decided to schedule a demo today? Assuming, by the way, it's an inbound lead because a lot of companies are doing outbound activity. Um, so it, it, there's there's that. You have to have set the context there. So assuming that you have a demo request on your website, prospect books it, you get on a call. Peter, appreciate you jumping on the call today. You know, out of curiosity, what's the reason you decided to uh, book a demo with me? You're going to get a reason that you're going to get like a, an initial response. The mistake that most people make is they take that initial response and run with it. What they should be doing is go a layer deeper beneath the initial response. So you tell me more. The reason why I booked a demo with you is because our team are not doing well on demos and we need to close more. So what you need to do as a person doing the demos is dissect that. So Peter, when you say your team are not doing well on demos, how do you mean? So that is a framework. So when you get a, when you get an initial response on the discovery, you want to go a layer deeper, repeat back to the prospect what they said, and then follow it up with, how do you mean? And what tends to happen is the prospect starts to extrapolate and starts to elaborate and tells you a lot more detail. So you, the first thing I'd recommend is focus on the why, the mode, which is the motivation. It's the reason why they decided to book the demo. They decided that an hour of their time with you is really important. So that's the first step. I love it. And then you'll get to the underlying issues, right? Which which might be some context around why their demo close rate isn't very high. Uh, what might be happening in their business and their team, uh, any kind of other factors that might play into it, right? Yeah, you're, um, you're trying to figure out processes and motivation and all that. So you go, you, you should have a list of discovery. I call them pillar questions, so main questions to ask. And then you can have your off um, other questions that you can either ask early on or save for the demo when you're doing the demo. Okay, so this is pre-demo, right? You haven't, you're not showing them anything on the product yet. You're just getting them on a call. You're understanding why they've booked the call, and then you're yeah. you're, you're 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 digging a little bit to get deeper into the underlying reasons or, or drivers that that have caught you know made led to them booking a call with you, right? Yeah. Um. What's the best way to transition from that? You know, how do you know you, when you've done enough discovery and 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 the right moment to transition into the demo? Yeah. So, I mean, your product has certain features that you've built out, and those features help solve certain problems. So, in order for you, in order for you to find out which feature to even talk about on the demo, you need to identify the problem so you can sort of match them together. So that's on you to. to you should know your features well enough to know which problems they match. So that's, that's the first thing. So um, one of the things that you should incorporate into your discovery before you do a demo, I'll just maybe go through the framework right now is you want to set the objective of the call. Then you want to set the agenda of the call. Then you want to do an upfront contract. Then you want to go into your discovery questions. So I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate for a minute. So imagine you booked a call with me today. I would say something like, Peter, lo uh, appreciate you jumping on. You know, th the point of today's call, I'm setting the objective. The point of today's call is to learn a little bit more about your business and a little bit more about what you're trying to accomplish and your challenges and see if we're able to solve that. If not, that's that's totally fine. And if we are, that's great too. Um, as far as what we're going to cover on the call today, we're gonna. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions just to understand a little bit more. Then I'll, I'll go into the demo to show you what, which functionalities and features you can pull to solve XYZ problem. And then towards the end, we'll talk about onboarding, next steps, and pricing. Does that sound fair? You'll say, okay. I'll say, great. And Peter, upfront contract. My only ask is, for whatever reason, if you feel like it's not a fit, would you feel comfortable telling me? You'll tell me, yes, that's the upfront contract. The reason why I'm doing that is it's a micro commitment. I want you to commit to me early on. So as I'm going through the demo and when I get to the pricing and the closing, you'll feel very comfortable telling me the truth. You'll say yes. Okay, great. And then I go into my discovery questions. You have a list of questions. Once you are done with the questions, the point of the questions, remember, is for you to understand the prospect problems and if you feel that you can solve those problems. So if you feel like you can solve the problems, you say something like this. Great. Well, I appreciate you answering all these questions, Peter. Um, based on what you're telling me, it sounds like, and I'm going to repeat back the problem, it sounds like you're dealing with X, Y, Z. And based on that, we do have functionality that will allow you to, to solve that problem. So let me share my screen and show you how we do that. And I transition into the demo. And maybe the first screen could be a little bit of a background about the company if you want. But the idea is 
you do a recap of what you've learned from discovery and then you're like all right let me just let me let me now share my screen and then you transition to the demo yeah hey i love that uh what did you call it a micro contract or mini con my, a, a, a micro commitment it's a micro, micro contract a micro commitment yeah. yeah i love that because um I, i've never heard of that before or never seen somebody do that um and i think what it's what's great about it is that sometimes on the sales calls you get an objection which might not be the real reason it might just be something to get out of the situation mm. oh, okay um we 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 they might just give you x reason okay we're looking at a couple of products we're going to think about this and come back but you haven't really understood what their objection is right so at least that frames it and gets them to agree and commit to enabling you enabling them to share what their real objection is so you can actually handle that or use it as feedback for future sales uh demos is that it would you say that's the purpose of that yeah the micro commitment so it, it, yes, and I'll talk about objections for a minute. Um, so the micro commitment, the purpose of that is so when you get to the end of the call and you talk about pricing, what tends to happen is when people don't ask upfront, like, hey, can you, will you tell me the truth? They get to the end and they'll ask the prospect, so what do you think? Is this a fit? And the prospect is beating around the bush. So by you asking the prospect to commit to you, to be honest, at the end, it's going to be a lot easier for the prospect to open up. Going back to objections. I don't, I only use the words and say the word objection and rebuttal and overcome just because that's the nomenclature of the industry. People know yeah. what objection means, but yeah. I think it's, it's a wrong way to think about things when the prospect is saying, um, oh, that's not going to work for us. Or, um, I have to speak to my colleague after this call or the price is too high. It's not an objection. It's a concern. They have some underlying concern. Your job isn't to overcome it. It's to understand the concern. So when you go into hearing objections, instead of, instead of hearing it, you're thinking, what concern does the prospect have? The language and the words that you use afterwards are very different. They're not salesy. So if the prospect says the price is too high and my job is, hold on, what's the concern? Is the concern high or value? So I'd say something like, Peter, when, when you say price is too high, it, how do you mean? Like, I'm trying to understand, like, that's, that's the first thing when I hear a concern. Um, and then I'll maybe isolate the price, you know, Peter, just for the sake of this conversation, like, let's, let's put price aside for a minute. Besides the price, what other concerns do you have about what I've shown you? Because I'm trying to understand if it is price or if it's value. Oh, no other concerns. Oh, then maybe it is a budget thing. Um, so I think a little rule of thumb for anyone listening is when you hear an objection, think concern. And when you are wanting to overcome, think, understand, understand concern. Great. Hey, I love those tips. Um, I can see how through your, through your coaching, you can really get uh, people to think about the right way, have a structure for their demo, uh, frame it well for the, for the prospect uh, and deliver a good experience that actually addresses their concerns. How do you wrap up? What, what's your close for, for the demo? Um, how do you finish, finish up? Yeah. So when you say close, you're talking about like asking for the close or just like wrapping up the entire call? Um, well, I know obviously in sales, we've got this, this concept of the closing, uh, close for it, but, but, um, I know you, you, you mentioned that you'll talk about pricing and say, you know, what do you think? Is this, mm. could this be a fit for you? Um, how do you generally wrap up the, 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 the call from there? Do you, do you aim to book another follow-up uh, conversation is that what your your kind of goal is for the end of the demo or are you actually looking to sign them up there and on on that demo yeah it, it, that well it depends on how the demo is going after the future so one thing that is extremely important to do is after you show the prospect the features that are fit to their problems you want to get post feature feedback because you want to know based on what i showed you peter is this what you're looking for because if it's not then then I can't move on. I, I need to find out. So I'm doing this throughout the call because by the time they get it before the pricing, I'll say something like, Peter, before we go into pricing, um, based on what you've seen so far, I know you mentioned that you're, you're, pro that you're dealing with XYZ challenge. Based on what I've shown you, do you feel like ABC company is a fit for you? Because if it's not, there's, no, there's really no point going over pricing. So I want to first gauge interest. If you say, yes, it's a fit. All right, let's go over pricing. We go over pricing. If everything is a fit throughout the call and at the end, 
and I know that your timeline is ASAP. That's a question you need to ask on discovery. What's your timeline? Then I'm going to try to go in for the close. Like Peter, so far, I mean, it's, it seems like it's a fit based on what you're telling me. And you mentioned that you're looking to implement something like this literally ASAP because your team are, are bleeding revenue. So what else would you need to see in order for me to earn your business today? That's a straight close question. Just ask for the close. If based on the call, there are still pending questions that you're, I have to get back to you that I, I don't know the answer to. I don't know yet if it's a fit because you're not sure if it's a fit, then I'm not going to go for the close. What I, the way I'll wrap up, I'll say something like, so Peter, um, I mean, basically I'm looking at my notes. You asked me three questions and I'll repeat back the questions. Um, I'll get back to you on those questions. Why don't we do this? Why don't we set um, some 15 minutes on the calendar for Monday at, at 2 p.m.? This way I can get, I, we can go over those questions together because by then I'll be already speak to my developers and I'll have the answers. Does 2 p.m. work for you on Monday? And then if you say yes, I'm going to send you the calendar invite while we're on the phone. I'm like, hey, Peter, I just sent you a calendar invite. Did you get it? Yep. Okay, cool. Great. So I'll speak to you. I'll speak to you Monday. Any other questions? Great. No? Cool. And I hang up. Perfect. That's great. Hey, Moore, thank you so much for sharing your tips. I think there's a lot of value in there for founders. Anyone doing sales demos, uh, I think, could really benefit from the tips you shared with us today. So I appreciate that. And also potentially from your training. So how can anybody check out more about what you do and potentially sign up if they're interested? Sure. Um, they can go to uh, my website, demo to close.com. I'm currently doing a revamp, but the website that you go to now is, is the current stage of the website. Um, and there's more information there. And then you can book a, like a discovery call with me to understand if that's what you really need. Um, you can also check me out on LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure you can drop off the link. And then I have a podcast that they can listen to as well. Super. That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I'll grab the link off you and I'll, I'll add it to the description. Cool. Uh, thanks again for joining us. It's been great to uh, meet and uh, have this chat with you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks.